Welcome back. This is Power Breakfast on Citizen TV. Trust you're having a fantastic morning. Interesting discussion that uh, I'm about to have here regarding uh, the issue of regaining trust as a business uh, from your consumers once it is lost. I'm joined in studio right now by Ian Nether, who is uh, the CEO of Razor Resource. Welcome to Power Breakfast. Thank you very much, Joy. Yeah, thanks for being here. Now, I understand that uh, your organization, that you deal with issues of uh, trust and employee engagement. So maybe we'll get to know a little bit more about what that means. But the main issue I wanted to talk about today is, is what happens in an organization once you've lost the trust of the consumer. So let's start with maybe why that happens. Is it just an issue of, I mean, you've heard, you know, some high profile cases of businesses that are, have lost money for, you know, for, for its customers and then things kind of go haywire. But what is, what is the real issue of why that happens? I think, uh, Joey, the first thing I'd like to maybe bring into perspective mm -hmm. is um, you know what what trust is mm -hmm. and in its simplest definition and when you look at what trust is uh, we're looking at confidence and the opposite of that mm -hmm. is distrust mm -hmm. or basically um, people being suspicious mm -hmm. and you know Stephen M. R. Covey who will be coming later this month on 30th and 31st to Kenya actually also has a component that says that trust can be defined in two ways. Mm -hmm. One is from a character side and the other one from a competent side. Mm -hmm. And so from a character side is basically your ethics, your values, um, your empathy. And then from a competency side, it's basically um, are you able to do the task? Do you have the knowledge? Do you have the skills? Mm -hmm. And so what we say is you can actually trust somebody from just their character mm -hmm and their values, mm -hmm. but you might not trust them when it comes to competence. In right. other words, if I was to break that down a little bit, you can have a hairdresser that you really like mm -hmm. and the integrity is fine, mm -hmm. but when it comes to making your hair, mm -hmm. because they might not know how to put together the chemicals, mm -hmm. or maybe they haven't gone to school, mm -hmm. then you might not trust them with right. your hair. Yeah. So I just wanted to yeah. know, bring that into perspective mm -hmm. uh, before we then get into um, a, a business situation mm -hmm. and, you know, when we look at businesses uh, where people are not trusting them, uh, it means that one of those two things Has are not working. Yeah, yeah. Either their character or their competence mm -hmm. is not right. Mm -hmm. And so maybe we can start from there. Yeah, so how does, how does that uh, impact how the business begins to operate at that point when you look around and you realize our consumer base no longer trusts us for, for either of those two reasons? How does that affect the business in that moment? I think the, the first thing that happens to that business is that they're going to start losing um, customers. Right. And, um, you know, customers only come to businesses that have the right uh, brand reputation. Mm -hmm. And brand reputation comes as a result of um, the fact that you have the right values mm -hmm. and also the fact that you're competent. Mm -hmm. So if you, for example, are um, uh, an organization that delivers um, uh, travel mm -hmm. as an airline you know first of all i have to trust you as someone who has the right values mm -hmm. you're operating within certain ethical dimensions mm -hmm. and then secondly uh, you need to be competent enough to take me where i need to be at the time that i want to be there mm -hmm. and so again we come back to to, to those elements mm -hmm. that uh, customers will always run away from you mm -hmm. if they feel that one of those balances are not there so it's critical for the, the, uh, those two balances to be there yeah and definitely something that raises alarm there i had someone on social media i forgot the exact handle but they said something to the effect that regaining trust in business is harder than closing a deal in the first place do you agree with that statement i i, I agree um one, one of the um values uh, of business the most critical one that can actually be uh, broken and is harder to you know bring back is a whole area of trust mm -hmm. it is possible to build it but it takes time to build it. Right. And so um, there are actually uh, ways that you can build trust back into a business. Mm -hmm. And um, when we look at what Stephen M. R. Covey teaches, he actually says there are five ways okay. that we can actually bring back trust into a business. Okay. And it starts really at the self level. So mm -hmm. if you're a CEO or the um, owner of a business, mm -hmm. you need to be trustworthy. Mm -hmm. And for you to be trustworthy, there are four things that you need to have. And one of them is you need to have integrity. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, uh, people need to, ha to, to feel that your intent, your intentions are right for them. Mm -hmm. um, and then you need to have the capability, meaning you need to have 
a track record of having, you know, of knowing what you're doing. You're competent enough to be able to deliver the services that they're looking at. Mm -hmm. And then finally, you need to be uh, result oriented. So that's the first level of, um, you know, how you can build trust. So it starts business. at the very top. Start at the very top and then goes all the way to um, your your organization mm -hmm. and goes to you, the society. Mm -hmm. And so we can look at how you can build um, you know, trust at self, relational, organizational, market, and societal level. Yeah. And Is organizational when, because I would assume if, if there's trust lost amongst consumers, employees as well, I was sort of affected by that and uh, start to maybe question what's going on in this business. Am I in the right place? Should I? Yeah. Those exactly. Types of things. And, and you said it right. And that's organizational trust. Mm -hmm. And so in many companies, when you look at uh, the trust levels, you know, there are issues of um, the fact that n there's no open communication. Mm -hmm. And so staff and uh, employees don't know what's going on. Yeah. There are also, um, you know, organizations where credit is not given to those that uh, it should be given to. Right. And that actually breaks trust. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also, when you look at those organizations, you find symbols that denote a lack of trust, mm -hmm. uh, wha wha whereas others do denote trust. So symbols that show that there's no trust in the organization mm -hmm. are things like a 500-page manual, which <laughs> is an employee handbook, mm -hmm. which <laughs> details every little um, rule right. about that organization. Mm -hmm. That's actually a trust symbol mm -hmm. uh, that shows this distrust in the organization. Right. On the converse, you can actually have a trust symbol or say a CEO who decides they're not taking a salary raise because the organization is not doing well. Mm -hmm. So you can actually build trust at the organizational level as well. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, when we go to the societal level, mm -hmm. there's this assumption in Kenyan society that expect some form of corruption, <laughs> you know, I in various organizations. So it's almost something that we expect to happen. So when we hear that this business has run off with your money, you're kind of like, you know, I, s I saw that coming, in, mm -hmm. in, you know, in some form. Is this an issue <laughs> for us as Kenyans that we need to change that mentality so that we can expect have higher expectations for you know the people that we're doing business with? I, I think the issue is not the consumers. Mm -hmm. The issue is the people that are delivering the services. Mm -hmm. There's actually a crisis of trust in this country. Yeah. And you just need to look at uh, banks, look at our education institutions, yeah. Look at our media. Mm -hmm. <laughs> look at um, you know government. Look at churches. Mm. In each of those yeah. uh, areas, you can actually point at things that are going on that have ended up in uh, low trust. What we call low trust taxes. Right. And um, and therefore consumers and 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 people that are getting services from those institutions rightly um, have very low trust in them. Mm -hmm. And so I think the question is, you know, what do they need to do? Uh, to be able to, to, to regain, regain trust. Regain that trust. And um, when you look at our country, because of that crisis of trust, mm -hmm. um, we are suffering from two things. Um, you know, some, some organizations are suffering from low trust dividends mm -hmm. um, or, or, other, or rather low trust taxes, while others are uh, enjoying what we call high trust dividends. Mm. Let me break that down a little bit. When an organization has low trust in, in, in it, then the cost of doing business actually goes up right. and the speed of doing business goes down. Mm -hmm. You know, as I was coming into, um, you know, Citizen, mm -hmm. uh, I had to go through a security check. Mm -hmm. Now, it's nothing to do with Citizen, mm -hmm. but because the country has become very low trust, r trusting in security yeah. and affairs, so that's it means that every building you get into, mm -hmm. you have to be Checked searched, yeah. and searched. Mm -hmm. So what does that do for business? Mm -hmm. It actually slows down the business mm -hmm. and it's also expensive for the business because you have to have additional security, you have to have scanning machines mm -hmm. and, um, and that's not good. Yeah. So that just demonstrates that when you have a low trust environment, the cost of doing business goes up and yeah. the speed goes down. Yeah. And the converse is true. Mm -hmm. You know, where you have high uh, trust, then the speed of doing business goes up mm -hmm. 
and the cost of doing business goes down. So as you've spoken, you yeah. know, this affects all different <laughs> aspects of both the business and society. Right. Perhaps you can just give us some, um, you know, as consumers who are watching, mm. what should we do? Should we expect more from all these different organizations you've mentioned, such as church and media and, and, and government and whatnot? Right. Uh, and, you know, in this day and age, also of social media, word goes around very, very quickly. Mm. I mean, somebody posts online that this bank did this to me or whatever, creates a panic as we've seen recently. So maybe mm. just um, some final keys from a consumer's point of view of what we can do to to help this process along? I, I think what we should do I I is that we should vote with our pockets. Mm -hmm. We should only engage and work with organizations that really deliver mm -hmm. results to us. Mm -hmm. And that's how we should get rid of those that do not deliver results to us. Right. And when we do that, then it's a very strong message that when you do right, when you can be trusted, then you get my money mm -hmm. and you get my loyalty. <laughs> yeah. So that's what the consumer should do. Yeah. And, and we know situations where, you know, when I look at Kenya, we have some great examples of companies that have, or, or organizations, let me put it that way, mm -hmm. that have high trust and they're being rewarded properly. Okay. When I think about um, the Beyond Zero campaign mm -hmm. by uh, High Excellency Margaret yeah, Kenyatta, first lady, yeah. I, would say, I would say that, you know, people see that as a high trust uh, organization. Right. And you can see that um, in terms of success, suc mm -hmm. you know, being uh, successful, mm -hmm. uh, she's, she's been very successful in speedily implementing her objectives of having yeah. a mobile um, you know, medical unit mm -hmm. in almost each of the counties, mm -hmm. of the 47 counties. I can tell you, perhaps if it was me or somebody else, mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't have done it as quickly as she did it. Mm -hmm. So she's enjoying uh, high trust dividend. Mm -hmm. I think uh, to an extent, you know, one of our biggest mobile, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, phone companies is also enjoying that, mm -hmm. you know, through their mobile uh, uh, transfer system. Yeah, but and then again, that has taken time. It's taken time. Yeah. And trust sometimes takes time to build. Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you so much for this conversation. Uh, it, it's good to end on that positive note that there are some organizations who are getting it right, right. when it comes to uh, trust in business. So I think we've started the conversation. If you'd like to continue it, uh, definitely use the hashtag uh, Power Breakfast on social media to let us know your thoughts about uh, this conversation with Ian Ngede, who is the CEO of Razor Resource. Thank you again for being here. Uh, we've got a chef competition that's going to be taking place a little bit later on on the show today. You don't want to miss that. Uh, Willis will be joining uh, me and a couple chefs uh, on the other side of the studio. But